Okay, so we're going to continue with a single phase full wave uncontrolled defy again. So we're going to uh, complete the session. Um, uh, so yesterday we discussed, uh, we did discuss on the single phase full wave uncontrolled defy with a resistive load, and then we move into resistive and inductive load, and then we also have this case, the case of resistive inductive plus the back EMF. Okay, the back EMF. Right, so just uh, just to refresh, uh, what happens to the circuit operation? Um, we look into the resistive load for uh, the case of resistive load. So during positive half cycle, we're going to see that D1 and D2 uh, experience the forward bias, right? During positive half cycle, D1 and D2, the diagonal diodes here will be on because of a positive uh, forward bias, and then we have the current flows in that direction. Right, so D one and D two will be on, and uh, D three, D four during that time will be off. So, uh, and then we have the output voltage follow the supply voltage. So this is uh, a full wave rectify output voltage waveform. And then during the negative half cycles, so during the negative half cycles here, we're going to see that D one and D two now reverse bias, and D three, D four, uh, uh, got, uh, forward bias, and therefore. The output voltage will be uh, following the opposite to the supply voltage. So that's why this is what the half wave, uh, full wave rectifier output voltage waveform will be. All right, and uh, the, uh, when we talk about the output current, because this is a pure resistive load, the output uh, waveform, the output current waveform will copy exactly as the input current, but uh, uh, copy the output voltage waveforms. But it's scaled down by a factor of R because I equals to V divided by R. So it also have this uh, uh, pulse, okay? Um, and if you reflect back to the input current, so the input current always carry the output current actually. So if I can mark here, so this is your input current. Okay, so that input current actually carries the output current. So during positive half cycle, it will be equals to the supply of uh, uh, the output current. And then during the negative half cycles, it will actually equals to the negative of the, the opposite to the output current here. So the input current also will be sinusoidal. But in the case of uh, resistive and inductive load, and to discuss that, we normally we're going to assume highly inductive load uh, conditions. So in, when it is in the highly inductive load, we're going to replace, we're going to remove and replace this R plus L with a constant current. Okay, so we're going to remove and replace. So this is your uh, the circuit that we're going to uh, look at. So this is the circuit that we're going to focus at. So we have a, a, a constant current at the output. So therefore, if you look at this, uh, current actually the output current will be a constant current I DC so in that case the input current will be square waveform and we did discuss on how to get the harmonic or the uh, Fourier series of the square waveform square input current okay so uh, during that time we also uh, when we look into the this is i'm going to show you what happens during the cycles so let's me let me reduce okay so this is also the simulation this is simulation of the piece in simulation of the full wave rectifier with a constant current output so idc here is the output current and iac is the input current the square waveform here is it right so in this case when we look into the uh, the diode current, diode one and diode three, okay. So diode one, this is actually diode one here. This is your diode one, and then we have diode two here, and we have diode three there, and then we also have this diode four here. Okay. So if you uh, focus on the positive half cycle, during this time, we're going to see that D1 and D2 is on. So that's why it carries the 
output current of IDC and ID3 will be off thread. So this is your ID3, the current through your D3. So uh, when it uh, uh, when it change to the negative half cycles during this time, okay, um, it's changed to the negative half cycle. If you look carefully, the current inside the ID1 and the ID2 change state change levels instantaneously instantaneously which means it jumps from zero to the idc and for the diode current diode d1 it reduces or it falls from idc to zero instantaneously okay so that happens uh, if we uh, if we have a uh, input uh, if we have a circuit with a purely uh, with a resistive inductive load, with highly inductive load condition. Okay, so now we're going to look at what happens to the circuit if there is a LS, there is an inductance in the front end. What about if you have the source inductance in the front end? So this uh, source inductance actually may come from the cable and also it may come from the transformer because we know that the if you talk about the uh, the system you always have three phase uh, supply from the tmb and then it is step down uh, or it will be there will be a step down to single phase uh, uh, rectifiers uh, i mean uh, 240 volts so there is a in transformer somewhere inside so because of that transformer has a large winding so it will be represented by a source uh, inductance source source inductance and also the cabling so that's why in practical we always have this source inductance so uh, now we're going to discuss on what does it how does it affect uh, this uh, the operation of the circuit with the if we have that source inductance in front end so that would be in 4.3 4.2 here okay in this section right so resistive and inductive is source inductance so we're going to look at the circuit uh, so before that, okay, this is uh, the intro. The F effect of finite I cell is a circuit operation is also important since practical source could be from the cable or transformer windings. Right? So first we're going to analyze with a resistive load. So if it's a resistive load, a purely resistive load, uh, it only affect the source inductance here, only affect the phase difference between the output voltage and the supply voltage so the output voltage will be shifted or will be delayed or lagging behind the supply voltage by phi angle and you can find the phi angles here by using this equation it's just a matter of inverse tangent omega ls the source inductance divided by the resistive inductance so the, uh, the value of the resistance of the output pure resistive load okay so that is the mainly uh the the, uh, the the effect of having that source inductance in the circuit okay what interesting is is when we look into the case of highly inductive load or with a resistive inductive load okay so to focus on the uh to the effect of the source inductance we're going to assume again a highly inductive load cause a case whereby the output here will be replaced by a constant current Okay, so in this case, we're going to replace, which means you're going to remove this, not put in the parallel, but we remove this and we're going to connect a constant current at the output. Okay, so we're going to connect the output current, the constant input current, uh, output current with IDC, right? And we do have this uh, source inductance. Okay, so before this, uh, I've, I've shown you without the source inductance, Without the source inductance, the current jump, okay, so if you look into the ID1 and ID3, the current jump instantaneously without the source inductance. Is that it? Hmm? Because it's purely resistive load, it jump from uh, IDC to zero, and for the D3 from zero to IDC instantaneously at this point. Okay, so now with the source inductance, 
let's have a look at the voltage waveform here. So if you come, if you look at, if you observe, okay, during uh, the effect of having that source in Athen, we got to see that the current. Okay, let's focus on the transfer of um, current from uh, D three, okay, D three and D one, D three and D one. So of course, before the zero crossing to the positive half cycle. So here we have the condition of uh, D three and D four is turned on. Is it D three and D four turn on? So D three will uh, carry the IDC. Okay, so we have this is your the blue waveform here is actually the IDC. So this is I D three. Okay. And the yellow current waveform here is actually I D1. Okay, so we observe that because of that source in latins, right? Because of that source in latins, there is a overlap between those currents, I D1 and I D3. Because why? Uh, when a voltage goes into the positive half cycles, the current in I D3 reduce or falls with a certain rate it will fall it will reduce with a certain rate until it reach zero levels and for the id1 it will rise with a certain rate compared to the uh, without the source in that thing just now it change instantaneously from zero to idc and from idc to zero but because of that source in that terms, there is a Overlap whereby the current uh, the current in the diode uh, doesn't change instantaneously, but there is an overlap of these two currents, which means D1 and D3 during this time are on. Both are on on state. They are on state at this particular uh, window. So this is known as commutation interval. So this is known as commutation interval mu or we also call it as a overlapping period and the overlapping of period so during this time also we're going to see that the supply of uh, the, the output voltage also goes to zero so now let's look at what happens if this um, uh, during this uh, overlap period okay so right, to describe let's look, let's look into this uh, circuit PCM circuit so D1 and D3 are on, is it? So D1 and D3 are on. So when the diode is on, it will appear as a short circuit, is it? It will appear as a short circuit here. D3 also short circuit. As well as D2 and D4 also, they will be short circuit because they are, they are also on. So if you, uh, if you look at this state, the equivalent circuits, or we're going to see that the this point and that point will be short circuit is it will be short circuited so therefore the output voltage the output voltage here will be zero okay so that's why we have the output voltage equals to zero during the overlap period so um the and that's why we have a zero and uh, therefore you also uh, U is known as an overlap period, and uh, it the overlap angles here, or the overlap period or overlap angles here will end when the current I D one reach the I D C as well as I D three reduced to zero. So that uh, marks the end of the overlap period, and that is denoted by the U, the angle of U overlap. So are we going to first we're going to analyze what will be do the analysis and to find what is the equation for u. Yeah, what is the equation for u here? The overlap angle. And as well as we're going to again we're going to look at the output voltage, uh, the average of the output voltage. Okay, so first to obtain the 
uh, there is an explanation here you can read again okay while uh, the equivalent circuit during overlapping uh, periods will be this okay so we just consider uh, this loop because this is short circuit d1 is short circuit as well as d3 short circuit right so we're going to look into this particular loop only this loop go to that that loop okay so we're going to consider only that loop all right so this is equivalent circuit during overlapping period so you have vs the supply voltage and then we have a vl the voltage across the inductor and this is short circuit the diode one and diode three also short circuit okay so in this case we uh, do the kvl take the kvl across uh, the uh, circuit we're going to have vs equals to vl and therefore we have v peak sine omega t equals to ls di over dt and it is confident to uh, convert into radians so we have theta equals to omega t therefore d theta equals to omega dt so if you replace in this equation then you get v peak sine theta then equals to omega ls di over d theta because you have this uh, uh, differentiation isn't it okay All right and then we integrate both sides we cross multiply the d theta here so we have v peak sine theta d theta so we have to integrate both sides and now look into the current and also the uh, the angle so for voltage we integrate from zero to mu and for the current let's look at the current so the current is actually during this time the integration should be from idc to idc minus idc to idc okay so that's why you have this equation because you integrate with respect to di right you integrate with respect to di and therefore the limit should be minus idc to idc okay right so you solve that and finally you find out that the angle can be found can be determined by using this equation right u equals to cos inverse cos 1 minus 2 omega ls idc over vp Okay, and to obtain the average output voltage, okay, and now uh, we know what is a U, the mu or U, and now we're going to identify what will be derived, what will be the output voltage equation, the average of the output voltage equations. So remember, before this, we will doubt the source inductance, okay, we already derived for the voltage equation, the average voltage equation for the uh, full wave rectifier without the source inductance and if you compare to the voltage that we obtain with the with the case of a highly uh, with the case of the source inductance there is actually a voltage drop is it there's a small voltage drop here there's a small voltage drop here okay so the strategy is we know the average voltage here then why not we just minus the average voltage here to obtain the total average voltage for your vdc in this case is it? okay so the focus is to get the area under the curve or the voltage drop and then you're going to get the average voltage uh, drop here and then you just subtract the vdc from the uh, without the source inductance with the small area drop here that will give you the output voltage the average of the output voltage okay so that's what we're going to do so go back to that then okay so to obtain the average voltage is its waveform shown in figure 5 4.12 so this is the average of the without the source in tent. It is observed that there is a missing area. I just uh, uh, explained just now. So there's a missing area during the competition angle uh, interval. So VDC can be determined if the average voltage drop missing area is known and subtracted from the average output voltage without the LS. 
okay so again to find the voltage drop or the area under the curve you just simply evaluate or integrate the supply voltage here and then you integrate from zero to mu zero so therefore you have this so the voltage drop the area is zero to u and then you have phi peak sine theta d theta so that will give you the missing area and we found out that equation 4.49 here actually equals to equation 4.47 so let's have a look 4.7 so it is equals with that uh, to this equation three. so therefore you don't have to evaluate you just simply know that the v drop here also equals to 2 omega ls idc since the output voltage repeats by pi the average voltage drop becomes you have to divide by pi to get the average so therefore the voltage drop equals to the average voltage drop becomes um, 2 omega ls idc i think i made a mistake here this is not uh sorry this is not hat it cannot be hat okay this is not hat you have to remove this uh hat here because hat actually the maximum okay so you remove that this is the average voltage eh? so the average voltage has to be 2 omega ls idc over pi Okay, so therefore, finally, the average load voltage will be equation 4.42. Uh, if I can click that, so this is your voltage output without the source inductance, and then you just subtract with, then you subtract with the average voltage drop during the overlap, which is 2 omega SIDC. Okay, so we found out that the output voltage now becomes 2 Vp over 5 minus 2 omega ZDC. So if you want to find the average voltage drop, then you do this, uh, get this equation. Okay, and, and therefore the effect, so uh, what is the, uh, how does the source inductance affect the circuit? It's, for the first one is the reduction in the average output voltage, which is VDC here. So there is a reduction because of the missing area. So there is a reduction of uh, average voltage will form and the other uh, effect of having that source nothing is that there is a distortion on the voltage supply of the converter okay so let's look at this uh, circuit so ma mainly if you think of this uh, we have this rectifier and then connect to your wall socket so this is your wall socket here if you want to connect to loop 2 and loop 3 so probably you want to connect to your pc to your laptop okay which is load one a uh, load 2 and load 3 as well as you have the same point connect to your rectifier here so because of that we're going to see that the voltage at this point of common coupling will be distorted so this is actually the output voltage uh, reflect back to the input side <coughs> sorry so you have the output voltages now, which is, uh, we have this missing area here. So this is reflected back to the front side, the input side. And therefore, the voltage supply at this point now become distorted. So this is voltage at that particular point. Okay, so therefore, your load 2 and load 3 will now see a non-sinusoidal voltage supply that fit there uh, I mean that there will be input to the load here so there will be a problem with harmonics that we will be experienced by loop 2 and loop 3 okay so let's now uh, let's try to have a problem one here in the single phase pool with uncontrolled rectifier so you can try to simulate and again uh, with the simulations you can find the U so how to get the U from the simulation? I think I've shared with you how to get the beta from the simulation. So you just make a, uh, you just relate to U, uh, 
20 milliseconds, which is 50 hertz. The period for 50 hertz is 20 milliseconds. So in 20 milliseconds, equals to 360 degree. And therefore, you must uh, uh, measure the delta T of U, and then you convert that into degree. So that will give you the degree of 11.04 degree. And then you can also find the average of the output voltage. Okay, so have a try. And uh, thank you. Bye.